Cause for Hope with Dr. Larry Mittenall and Pilar Pedraza is brought to you by Coles Cares and Ascension Via Christi in partnership with PBS Kansas Public Television. Take my hand, don't let go. Look in my eyes and in my soul. Hold me close, hold me near. Please let go of all your fear. I'm not going anywhere. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Pilar Pedraza, along with my co-host, Dr. Larry Mitnall, a uh, child and adolescent psychiatrist from Ascension That's Via right. Christi. We are here to talk about family mental health and wellness, which we believe is a timely topic given the growing number of teens and adults struggling with isolation and depression. Too many of us are not aware help is available and all too often friends and family fail to pick up on nonverbal cues that someone who they care about needs help, or if they do recognize the signs, may not know what they can do to help. With the help of a grant from Coles Cares, Ascension Via Christi, Wichita State University, and other local partners are actively trying to get the community thinking and talking about mental wellness and how we could all take an active role in staying mentally fit and helping those we love to do the same. Tonight, we will be talking about the need for aspirational role models in the development of our youth. In this is something that as somebody who has also spent time in the classroom as a classroom teacher, yes, I know, you know mentors so vitally important to our teens. They really are. And again, it's one of those things that in the last two years, especially with, with, um, with COVID, we've noticed that about our kids, that they really thrive in uh, being face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one with other people. But part of that magic is having really great mentors. And so um, I think, you know, in the development of kids, we, we're recognizing more and more the importance of having these really strong um, attachments, not just with one another, but with um, caring adults in their lives who are able to share, pick up on the beautiful things that are going on in their life, and sometimes kind of fan the flames of their interests, hopes, and dreams. And this isn't to say that parents aren't important, but as our kids are becoming teens, yes. they're kind of striking out, becoming more independent, figuring out who they are, and in a lot of ways, not wanting to be mom and dad anymore. <laughs> right. So they need those outside yes. influences. Yes, and I think, you know, if we all reflect back on our teenage years, um, we remember the talks that really meant something to us or really touched us. And sometimes in our exuberance, we've gone back to our parents and said, hey, you know, this coach told me this about myself or my band director pointed out this, you know, really great quality that I want to work on. And probably our parents, just like we as parents sometimes look at our own children and say, I've told you that 10,000 times. So it isn't that the knowledge um, that you give as a parent is insufficient, but kids really do resonate at different times, stages, and situations with other really caring people in their lives. So what are some things we can do to help our kids kind of visualize this path moving forward? Sure. Part of it is maybe putting them in the way of um, potential good mentors for them. And I think there's a, a great um, need um, that I often will encourage parents to, you know, if you see your child's budding interest in something, find someone who, who does that. And even if that's something in your wheelhouse, it might be helpful to introduce them to your friend or colleague who can also speak to that dream, that desire, and what their experience is are um, because that gives them another chance to have a model of someone doing the thing that they really want to do. And other ways parents can nurture kids' aspirations sure. because especially as we're talking about those teen years, they're not necessarily listening to us right, anymore. Right, that's right. <laughs> and so sometimes it's it's also sitting beside them to see what they're invested in and what they're you know consuming or into. And so um, I think we live in a culture too where there are influencers. I mean, influencers um, online, on YouTube, on TikTok, on social media. And so I think knowing who those are and maybe us being proactive as parents and and teachers and looking out for the really good people who have high quality content that um, that also speaks to this. Generation 
generation um, is really is really helpful. So um, I think if parents are sitting next to their children, just to you know hear who it, who it is that they're watching or what are they into, and then trying to introduce them um, to another great person that they could model their um, their kind of aspirations and kind of hook their star to. Yeah. So me not necessarily being into anime, if my child yes. is into anime, maybe time to start uh, paying a little bit more attention to that that's right. genre. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And there may be a really awesome, you know, artist out there who talks about, you know, what they did, the classes that they took, the techniques that they use um, to create the really beautiful, beautiful visuals that they do. And that might be a, a way for that person to say what you might be encouraging them to say. What they hear from you is go to school, take that art class, do those things. Things, but in the mouth of you know their hero or a legend, um, that might be the catalyst that they need to really say yes to a really great opportunity. And you spoke this month one-on-one -on -one with a young man for whom mentors really made a life-changing difference. Absolutely, um, I had the pleasure, um, pleasure and privilege um, of talking to Kyle Ellison, the um, executive director of Real Men, uh, Real Heroes, and he shared not only from his own personal experience but also the story that he's accumulated and walking alongside um, young men and trying to help them develop into really great human beings. So I think this would be a great time for us to kind of check in on that conversation. All right. I'm really honored today to be sitting across from Mr. Kyle Ellison, Executive Director of Real Men, Real Heroes. So thank you for being here, thank sir. Thank you. Um, and I'm really excited about our conversation uh, today. Um, so I was wondering if maybe the place to begin is to maybe tell Tell me a little bit about kind of you and um, what brought you to this point and some kind of life experiences. Yeah. For sure. Um, well, thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Um, you know, growing up, I grew up in Wichita on the south side okay. of town. Awesome. Um, the way that, you know, we moved, we moved a lot. Um, definitely grew up with the similar, you know, story that you hear a lot with, uh, you know, it's just my mom, myself, my sister, okay. um, my dad knew him, but he didn't live with us at the time and didn't really get to really know him till I was a bit older. Um, so my mom, she worked a lot. Uh, so we spent a lot of time uh, at home by ourselves, me and my sister. Okay. Yeah. And so anyway, just as you're growing up, you start to see people have access to opportunities and things that like you don't like you don't get to have because of whether just you know not having rides to get places mm -hmm. or not having the funds to be able to to do those things even if you could get there sure. um and so you you find yourself kind of in this in this awkward state this this bubble uh feeling like you you're not enough mm -hmm. okay. you know or yeah. oh okay well i'm not worthy uh, and then kids, kids are gruesome. So you go to school sure. and they make fun of you, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, so you just grow up with, with these things and you, you feel like, like you want more out of life. Yeah. Um, but then you don't have anyone to necessarily show you how to get there or, or yeah. here's the roadmap. And when you grow up in certain environments, the only people that a lot of times the people that you see that are successful are people that are doing things that are illegal. Sure. And, right. and it right. seems like easy, you know, money, quick mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. um, and they have all the luxuries that you're kind of like trying to achieve. And so right. it's, it's, it's easy to go down that path. Um, and so uh, for myself, I'm not just I think it's really important, you know, as being someone who, you know, when I was a kid and life was what it was, I used to always stare out of my window and okay. there was nothing there. Uh, <laughs> but I was throughout, out. I'm like, there has to be more to life than this. Sure. I used to always say that to myself as a kid. And yeah, so, yeah. um, I just did my best to figure it out. Sure. And so now I try to make it easier for other people. Uh, that's, that's incredible. Um, and there are so many layers to what you've described, both, you know, how our kids can internalize and, and get feedback from their environment that, you know, that maybe what's lacking is me not realizing that, um, maybe there's this world of, kind of resources and, and access that can really help a young, interested, intelligent young man to really achieve what it is that he dreams of, uh, of achieving. Yeah. Now, clearly you did it. I mean, you, you um, despite, you know, maybe early limitations in finding your way forward, um, were there some important things that, that you saw that were part of allowing you to do that and then um, and then maybe the, the next step is what made you on the inside say, 
now let me look for an opportunity or a way to give that to other children who might not have have it either. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, for me, when uh, when I was 16 years old, my mom kicked me out the house. Wow. And uh, okay. it's actually all my 16th birthday. And uh, sent me, yeah, crazy. <laughs> and uh, left me uh, actually saw on my dad's doorstep, you know. And so, wow, crazy. I mean, you know, just life is crazy. Um, everyone, we all have our reasons, you know. I ain't saying I was the easiest either, okay. you know. So, <laughs> um, you know, but it was one of the best things that could happen for me because yes. I got to one see, uh, uh, get to know my father, okay. you know, and then yeah. I also see things that are similar about uh, about myself you know, similar to him, Yes. Um, which was really nice. And, uh, but then also when I was there, he told me, he said, well, you're going to have to be involved in mm. uh, some programs or, or some things. And he said, I am, he was the treasurer of a nonprofit um, back okay. then called okay. Hope Street Youth Development. And huh. it was a, a youth led organization. So he was like, I'm the treasurer there. He said, I got to go to these meetings. You're going to come. Hmm. And so I went and uh, I, I believe that they, they liked like, kind of how I spoke and yes. they were like, you know, wanted me to join they were like you know would you consider being the president of this and i'm like okay <laughs> um but then we ended up doing really cool stuff like we, okay. we put lights uh got we we raised funds and and i don't know we didn't like protest but we just made a lot of noise to get like streets street lights put in dark neighborhoods okay get parks yeah. built um and just so on so on and and i remember what happened was uh we were doing those things and to me they were really easy like it was work so okay. it being yeah. easy to mean it wouldn't work sure sure but uh but uh it was really an easy lane for me to okay. be in and it fit your skill set yes. and abilities too yeah. yeah and so what happened was we ended up because of the work we were doing we ended up getting flown out to dc and then flown out to chicago and and again wow. i'm 16 17 years sure. old and i remember thinking to myself i, I I'll never forget this. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, they'll fly people places just for doing good things, like in the huh. in the neighborhood, like for the community. Wow. Yeah. And I said, well, well, so you don't have to like, you know, you know, you're thinking, you know, you don't have to hoop. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to like, okay. Yes. And so that was the first little taste for me of I being see. like, oh, okay. And um, and one, it was natural, and I, and I just, I enjoy. Um, I used to work for the children's home, you okay. know, as well, yes. and um, did some crazy work there with uh. Uh, like Karen, Countryman, Roseworm, and okay. we'd walk the streets of Broadway trying to pull young ladies uh, out of out of uh, out of that lifestyle that wow. that happens down there. Yeah, that's how I was 16, 17, 18, uh, <laughs> doing that. And yes. so, um, okay. So anyway, um, when we started, when we got flown out places, and I was like, huh? Yeah. I said, this okay, this is cool. And then just life ended up bringing me back, you sure. know, okay. into yeah. it. Um, as well so and so then how did you get connected to real men real heroes because yeah. it sounds like you know it's interesting your life experiences seem like the perfect setup for yeah. your role as executive director now so so how did that how did that happen yeah uh, uh yeah i always say to people i'm like when, when it comes to the kids we work on i'm like i was these kids you know i huh, think sometimes okay. um i'm blessed and fortunate to have like a really good team around okay. me yes. um people who are passionate, people that are creative and like to do uh, new things or take my idea, ideas that I might have. And, and for, it's like, it's this. And then when they get a hold of it, it's this, okay, you know? Yeah. Um, and then um, I'm very big on, on, on a culture of, of um, creativity and ideas. Everybody has a voice. Okay. Um, oh, so, um, you know, I'm blessed in that, in that, in that regard. Real Men Real Heroes, it was uh, actually Ebony Clemens uh, Jubilee Day okay. that came to me and was like, Kyle, you should go for this role. Hmm. And in all honesty, I was actually like, I was like, no. <laughs> and the reason why was I didn't feel like I represented maybe what the organization stood for, hmm. you know, okay. um, enough. You know what I mean? Huh. Um, um, from, a, from a branding standpoint okay. and, uh, you know, just, I don't know, just being the level of a role model that, that they mm -hmm. would want. Okay. Um, and she said to me, she said, Kyle, you're exactly what we need. She said, mm -hmm. um, she said, these kids, she said, you have everything up here. She mm -hmm. said, but she'll, she's like, your look is a little different. She said, but yeah. you're, you're the, you, you could be a good middle ground mm -hmm. for them yeah. to, to be able to relate to be that bridge a little bit. Sure. And so, okay. uh, yeah. That's honestly what happened. So then I, and I, like I said, I said no. And then I thought through it and I said, well, you know what, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. try and see. And, um, and it's kind of like we were talking about earlier. It was so natural. And once I, once I got right. into the things just started to happen and I was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. Yes, yes. And I really 
love this, this theme that seems to be coming through in your story that I think resonates, I'm sure, with a lot of young people, and I'm sure a lot of families, too, who will be watching this, which is, you know, at every stage, sometimes there's this nagging voice telling you, this isn't for you, you're not good enough, maybe there's someone who's more polished, you know, fill in the blank, X, yeah, Y, Z, absolutely. who might be the right person, and really, the right person is you all along. Um, so that's really beautiful. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the mission of Real Men, Real Heroes and, and what it is that you guys do for the community and for the kids? Yes, uh, so our mission is male role models and empowering youth to help build strong communities. Okay. Um, it feels like, so I've been in Real Men, Real Heroes now, it'll be four years okay. in, um, in March. And uh, it feels like that mission is evolving over time. Sure. And uh, cause you know, our, our staff as a team grows, I mean, we have amazing, uh, young ladies that okay. work for our organization yes. as well, and um, and and our our demographic, our scope is just starting to uh, broaden a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the the main thing for us is that we really want to provide, and what we do is provide access to opportunities and okay. experiences. Yes. Um, we do what what we like to call it is experiential mentoring. Okay. Which is huh. where we we open the door to different activities, ideas, career fields, but we don't just talk about it, we go. We go okay. there yeah. and they have their mentors with them and so that we can, yes, we check on school and how those things sure. are going, but we also are trying to build that relationship, mm -hmm. but build a relationship based on an, a similar interest. Okay. So that we yes. can kind of break down those those barriers that sure. happen yes. uh, naturally. Uh -huh. And when it's like, well, hey, I'm into art. Okay. Well, oh man, I, I used to draw or I paint or whatever that thing, you know, whatever that thing sure. is. And then that connection is um, is there. And then we can open up the door to like, okay, well now this is how you do finances. And this okay. is how yeah. you, you know, you want to go to college. This is how you get there. Okay. Um, but that's basically what we do. We, we really believe mm. at the end of the day that wow. everybody deserves access. Yes. Um, and, and uh, uh, well, yeah, access to culture. Okay. You know, right. and that there's no limitations on that and that no, yeah. no one should have to be limited. I will tell you, I mean, that speaks to me in such a big way um, because it's a, it's a three-dimensional approach, maybe, the way that you've described it, that I think, you know, there are a lot of maybe programs or well-intentioned things that are meant to kind of bring someone to you, right? And they're the expert and they talk. Maybe you ask them a couple of questions, but, you know, if most kids are like I was in school too, I'm not asking the, you know, big, deep questions or I'm right. not revealing, you know, this is what I don't have. Yeah. Can I really, yeah. you know, be who you are? Absolutely. Um, and I think this, that experiential learning, I mean, that's really tremendous. Has that always been Thanks. a part of the no. ethos? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so but that's what you, that's what you, you yeah. brought, Me you and brought the team. to it. I'll, yeah. I'll never take okay. full credit. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, it was a, I like what you said to that 3D approach. We might, I might have to put that in our literature somewhere. Good, good, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, it, it was new. It was, it was, I think, they've always, uh, remember he was always just provided, like, I said, experiences going to, like, you know, going to see things, you know, in your, like, sporting events sure. and um, operas and, you know, uh, or theater, stuff like that. Yes. Um, so that part has always been there, but taking those outings, we just call them outings, um, and we want to, like, now let's also go to, like, everyday things. And then let's also yeah. go to things that aren't everyday things. So let's, right. but okay. let's bring them to it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, versus bringing it to them. And then it's somebody, you know, you're sitting in a classroom after you've been in a classroom all day. Right. To then <laughs> sit in a classroom some more and yeah. have somebody stand at the front and just talk to you. Okay. It just, I mean, like you said, like, when I was a kid, I mean, again, like, I was not, I wasn't, like, a, a troublemaker, but I was a sure. clown. Okay, sure. okay. <laughs> For sure. So yes. we just want to, um, yeah, do it different. That's, that's all. That's so incredible. Um, that's, that's really incredible. Um, I imagine that over the years you've also accumulated a number of stories, and I'm not going to ask you to give any, you know, particular details, but what's been some of the most kind of impactful things that you've heard from from you know moms and dads or kids who have been involved in the program yeah. and seen maybe doors open or or aha moments happening for kids yeah yeah do you mind uh you know a couple of the big things that we that we get um first and foremost what we're what we're very fortunate is that our kids have men in their lives that look like them mm -hmm. and that yeah. uh for a lot of parents and you know to uh, one thing that i'd love to 
to to clear up too because a lot of times it's confused all, all of our kids aren't single parent households okay. and stuff yeah. but like their dad's not involved in their lives but sometimes they just parents work a lot they okay. need that right. extra support yeah so so for some of our mentors we call them heroes they're like an uncle okay. you know or a big cousin yeah you know they're not trying to necessarily replace dad in the home right, right? okay um Good. but we so but the parents they love that they're like man my my kid really gets along with this person or that hero and since then okay. i've seen their confidence you know mm. um they believe that they're able to achieve these different things you yes. know and um that's that's really cool and then to the part of you know when they hear like these stories um of men um who are part of our program who grew up just like they're growing up right you yeah. know but they've you know accumulated whatever level of success or career growth or the right. aspirations they had it shows like oh well i could do this then right you know what yeah. i mean and um so we get a lot of that from the parents okay. the kids um and then when they find that interest point you know i'm thinking um i'm thinking about one in particular I will, it's not it's nothing deep but we did a, a activity this past uh, week um where honestly it was just some art stuff because we're about okay. to do a mural we're actually oh, about nice. to paint a, my uh, our kids are going to paint a, a mural of my angelo oh uh, at the my angelo library wow and, uh, yeah, wow yeah, yeah, that's it's incredible be really cool thank you <laughs> um so to prep them for and that's one thing too with our programs everything is like a series okay so we had a, a poet come out the first okay. week yes uh and then the second week we had them paint like uh coloring what once you put all the papers together it's like a bit it's like a mural but okay. they all they all colored smaller pieces of it and oh then, i see yeah you bring it together oh, um but then next week they'll start the mural okay and so there's one kid in particular um who i was thinking about uh afterwards i uh, i saw his mother and she was like how do you do is he is he engaged and i was yes. like nah i said he's, i said this art is incredible because i mean it was really good yes and uh she was like what do you mean she said he colored and i was like yeah she said what i said yeah i said we're gonna paint this mural i hope he's gonna be a part of it and he said and he told me he's like yeah i want to you know she's like i can't get him to do any art at the house wow and i was like oh wow. well, i don't i don't know the difference i don't know why you know sure, but sure. for whatever right. reason yeah. and so she was just ecstatic about this okay. and this kid has so much talent That's so incredible. i'm hoping we can bring that out of him yeah and for whatever reason he's not maybe we can either figure it out or we don't even i don't even need to know the why sure if we can just solve it yes and then give him if it's the confidence issue whatever it is for him right. to then explore that and then we have all of the the access or knowledge or means to help give him a at least a pathway into that life Beautiful. that's what he's looking for Beautiful. So. Uh, what a, what an open door uh, that's really incredible thank you again uh, this has been such a pleasure and i think i couldn't say it more beautifully than that so i appreciate your time um, and i know this is going to touch a lot of families so thank you again thank you and I know when you and I were talking about the discussion you had with Kyle, you really commented on how open he was with his own life history and struggles. Yes, and I, you know, I think that's a really important point for parents, for teachers too. I mean, we don't have to give our entire backstory um, because we all have had individual struggles and sometimes they're not all the appropriate stories to share with the young people in our lives. But I think being vulnerable and letting people know that, hey, you know, I did, I wasn't born, you know, perfect in front of a screen and being able to do these things, but there was actually a developmental process in the way it humanizes us, um, helps our uh, young people to kind of see the levels that it took to kind of get there. And I think that resonates and speaks with them and gives them um, hope that they can follow in your footsteps. And the other thing that you pointed out about this conversation was the role that mentors play, it's an important one, but it doesn't replace parents' roles yes, in their yes. kids' lives. And it can sometimes be hard, I think, for parents to, to hear if someone's making a recommendation that, hey, I think he might really benefit from you know, having a coach or a mentor or someone else kind of speaking into their lives. But really, it's not a competitive thing, and I was glad that he kind of emphasized that, that having multiple mentors really just provides other opportunities for kids to hear um, the good things that we want them uh, to hear. And to, and to see that, um, that it's possible from just a slightly um, different, different angle. So it doesn't have to be competitive. And often, you know, as parents, I think we win um, when our kids come in and have other you know, heroes that they're, um, they're kind of holding on to. Yeah. And as you move that into the classroom, into a parent who is really looking for mentors, I, I want to kind of go back to something you had said earlier that, you know, look for things that your child is interested in. N one natural place that we tend to look for mentors is sports. Yes. 
you know, coaches, right. et cetera, but not all children are interested in sports. No. And so sometimes you've got to take that extra step, go that little bit farther yes. than the activity that's handed to you at school. You're absolutely right. And, and it's worth it. I think it's worth the leap to, um, to find that thing, that spark that helps, you know, um, enliven our children's uh, lives. You know, I think um, even, I mean, having really great teachers helps to kind of, you know, direct your path and give you really great ideas. But sometimes the things that our kids are interested in don't exist in the classroom, or they might not exist at our particular school. Um, and so I'm often um, encouraging families and, and teenagers too to, you know, I think that's when it's time to stretch a little bit and maybe it's a phone call, maybe it's a visit to someone who does the work that you do. I've always been surprised, you know, um, at when I get an email from um, an interested high school student who wants to do a report on mental health related issues or, you know, a college student who thinks they might be interested in, um, in practicing psychiatry. I mean, that really makes my day. And I think, um, I think if young people know that and if, if their parents know that too, that actually there's probably an expert out there that no one's really asked, well, how did you get to where you are um, and why do you love what you do? Um, but I think a lot of people in those positions actually are really excited when they meet enthusiastic young people who are interested in learning from them, right? <laughs> That's almost like a parent being asked advice. You know, I mean, yeah. we are, we've been waiting for this moment all our lives and it's really exciting <laughs> um, when the opportunity comes. And so I think that's another way um, to, to find that for our children is to stretch a little bit and see if there's someone, you know, in the world um, doing the things that our children love. Okay. Well, it looks like we're out of time for today. We yeah. always seem to run out of time. These we conversations do. are so fascinating. We hope that you will join us for next month's show as we continue our dialogue about family, mental health, and wellness. Also, if you haven't yet taken advantage of the free Suspenders for Hope Suicide Awareness and Prevention Training Program, we hope you'll do so. Simply go to the website on your screen for more information. Take my hand, don't let go. Look in my eyes and in my soul. Hold me close, hold me near. Please let go of all your fear. I'm not going anywhere. This program was made possible by Coles Cares Cause Merchandise Program, supporting the health of families nationwide, including local hospital partnerships like this one with Ascension Via Christi. More information at coles.com cares.